the lecture you are about to watch uh, is one in a series uh, about uh, governance for development in Africa. Governance for development in Africa is an initiative uh, undertaken jointly by the Modrain Foundation and SAWAS School of Oriental and African Studies uh, in London. What we hope here is to uh, help create a debate about governance in Africa, to help raise awareness and knowledge. And for that purpose, we have sponsored uh, this series of lectures. I hope you enjoy the lecture and have fun. Thank you. What are the six lessons that can be drawn from the last, the last 10 years uh, where the fight against corruption has been seen as key to uh, creating a good governance environment in, 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 in African countries? One of the key lessons that we have learned is that, uh, which is something that we were always warned about by organizations like Transparency International, is that uh, prosecution is the most blunt instrument available in the fight against corruption by creating expectations that success in the fight against corruption means what we call it uh, in Africa, frying big fish. That if you have not fried big fish, you have not succeeded in the fight against corruption. Uh, that's really setting yourself up to failure uh, because um, it often means uh, big fish frying themselves, uh, which does not happen. And my own experience, it does not seem to happen even here in the West. The second important lesson has been that with regard to high-level corruption of the kind that captures the public uh, imagination the most, because of the huge success of media and civil society, perceptions uh, are often uh, more powerful than reality where corruption is concerned. The political impact of perceptions with regard to uh, corruption uh, can be extremely divisive uh, and can be used uh, politically uh, in a way that um, um, can be very, very uh, dangerous and even lead to, to violence. The third important lesson um, has been that as Africa has democratized, um, we've had to mobilize resources to compete in politics. And we are only beginning to face up to the reality that it is corruption that pays for politics. Uh, before fighting corruption, um, we should be talking about uh, fixing the politics. The fourth uh, uh, lesson has been, is, has been that the myth of anti-corruption anti agencies as a one-stop anti-corruption shop has now ended. Fighting corruption in a, in a society is about culture and it's about uh, creating a movement for transparency and against corruption that involves all of the people and um, therefore uh, it makes it more immune to politicization, ethnicization, because it's easy for corruption to be used as a, uh, as a political tool. The fifth uh, and second last lesson has been what I call um, the denationalization of, a, of, of, of the fight against corruption. The fact that um, some of the key anti-corruption reforms came to Africa via conditionalities has meant that the ownership of these reforms locally um, has been wanting. And this may explain why they have not been that uh, successful. Again, uh, the answer lies in fighting corruption starting at the grassroots by creating a movement where it is the population themselves who have a clear sense that patronage doesn't pay, that actually corruption is the reason um, they are suffering under uh, tremendous inequalities and the reason that poverty uh, is not being lifted. The 
the most insidious effect of corruption, especially the conspicuous consumption of, le of corrupt leaders that is, that is garishly displayed into the faces of some of the world's poorest people, um, has been to undermine the confidence of, of populations in their own leaders, in, in their governance institutions, and even in themselves. Um, I think this is by far the most troubling aspect of the fight against, uh, about, it's the most troubling aspect of corruption in, uh, Af in Africa, more than the huge sums of money that one hears uh, band bandied about. The way that corruption undermines the trust of people in their leaders and institutions, uh, not uh, the millions of dollars that have been, have been lost. Thank you very much.